I once had a love affair with my fan. What, hey? I fucking love that fan. Our apartment was like 119 degrees. Like an easy bake oven, but with bedrooms. And I would just fucking be it for Jorge. He just got me. He'd sit there and he'd sway back and forth. Sometimes he'd blow me lightly. Sometimes it was a little harder. Really depended on how I pushed his buttons. My true love, though, was Bob. Bob was my baby. White. Obviously. Had a dent kind of on the left side. Bob was my 1998 Toyota Corolla. The day I realized that Bob was gay was the day he rear-ended a minivan. It had nothing to do with the fact that I was popping a zit on the 405, but that my little Bobby had a thing for the larger vehicles. That year, Bob and I did a photo shoot together for my annual Christmas card. I was wearing this fabulous red and white dress. I was on top of Bob's hood. He had some tinsel and twinkle lights. He was wearing those headlamp eyelash extensions. I'm gonna pull those out for special occasions. I signed the Christmas card, Merry Christmas, love, Kate and Bob. My mother was so excited the day she got that card in the mail because she finally thought I wasn't a lesbian. <laughs> Did you know that your parents turn you gay if you aren't married by the time you're 18? <laughs> and not just me. I had to explain to my mother that Bob was my car. Hi, Mom. No, I still don't have a boyfriend. Bob is the car. No, 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 there's no one in the car. He is the car. I'm not in a relationship with my car. He's gay! <laughs> How do I know he's gay? How does anyone know they're gay? <laughs> My most recently named inanimate object, Samantha. <laughs> She's named after her benefactor, Sam. Did you guys need something? <laughs> Samantha. <laughs> I met Sam in Vegas. I, my friend had asked me to put $20 on black, so I'm a person of my word. So I went to the table with the ball and the numbers, put 20 on black. This strapping Brit walks over and puts $10,000 on red. I felt sick. <laughs> Hi, I'm Katie. Um, did you want me to move my money over to red? I'm gonna feel so bad if I win $40 and you lose $10,000. No, darling. That's just how the game is played. No, but seriously, like, we could just pay off my car and it would be exactly the same feeling. I would even go, oh! Give me the money. Is that why you're here? To pay off your car? In Vegas? I mean, it's not the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> then what are you here for your sexy Vegas vacation? Sexy? I mean, a Chanel bag would be nice. <laughs> and I know what you're all thinking. Katie, that's not a Chanel. It's a Gucci. Okay, that's not what you're thinking. <laughs> but the answer to that question is yes. <laughs> Sadly, yes. Gucci was closed. <laughs> Which leads me to the first time I was arrested. <laughs> I've never been arrested, I'm white, but I was in beauty pageants. <laughs> Being in beauty pageants is the most competitive sport I have ever been in. I was in the Miss America program, i.e. the non-Donald Trump program. His is about how much plastic surgery can you afford and still look like a human. Miss Americas, how smart are you? How can you make the world a better place? And are you healthy enough to wear a bikini in public? I wore a one piece. The reason I did pageants is because they don't give scholarship money to white girls from Orange County. And it was either that or sell my eggs. Eggs. 
So to explain how these bad boys work, 40% of your total score is the interview that happens two days prior. 30% is your talent. 20% bang and so kill me now. And 10% is your on-stage question. Amazing. For my talent, I sing the upbeat, well-known number, send in the clowns. <laughs> Isn't it rich? <laughs> Crushed it. Whole audience in tears, and that's exactly what you don't want to happen at a pageant. <laughs> However, the pre-interview killed it. I may have been a scotch buzzed. More than a scotch. Okay, I was not drunk. I don't think I was slurring. I got the highest score in the interview, possibly the lowest score. <laughs> Talent. I know I should have been a baton twirler. The real winner, though, was the on-stage question. Katie, if you were going to be invisible for a day, where would you go? <laughs> In that moment, you're supposed to say something smart, something clean, something inspiring. The boys' locker room. <laughs> locker room, like an Equinox locker room. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't like go into a stall with them. <laughs> I would just watch hot guys, hello. Uh, hot guys, sorry, distracted me. Change their clothes. Shit. Something smart, something clean, something inspiring. The Oval Office? Oh shit, that doesn't work anymore, does it? 